Hello and welcome to Gaming Night. My name is Banks and I am your host. The game we're looking at today has over 200 million accounts. Parents are paying tutors $20 an hour to help their child get better at it. And an amateur player won $3 million at the World Cup. This game is so popular, it's even been featured in Avengers Endgame. Ladies and gentlemen, we're kicking off Gaming Night Episode 3 with Fortnite. It's a game that's more about survival than anything else. That's how Fortnite was described by Cliff Blazinski himself after the game's release in 2011. The former design director for game development at Epic Games left the company soon after that, but Fortnite stayed and has since reached the top of the tops. But what really made Fortnite a true hen that lays golden eggs? Without a doubt, it's Battle Royale mode, released in September of 2017, a crucial moment which catapulted the game Game to the stars. After Dota 2 and Counter-Strike, Fortnite is the world's third biggest game when it comes to awarded prize money, but the numbers don't stop there. It took the video game industry by storm with its Battle Royale mode, with tens of millions of monthly players, and even though the game is free, it managed to accumulate nearly, and bear with us here, $2.5 billion in 2018. Yeah, you heard it right, billions, with a B. You could actually buy almost seven new Boeing 747-8s for that amount of money. And although Fortnite is now one of the many games with the Battle Royale mode, it still manages to stay at the top. So what exactly made it a global and cultural phenomenon, played obsessively by school-age kids even during class, famous rappers, professional athletes, middle-aged lawyers, and sales managers? The main factor is probably its accessibility. It's free to play, available on consoles, PCs, and iOS mobile devices, and it's also not that hard to grasp the basics, which makes it even more popular, and famous people love it. When rapper Drake joined an online session with Fortnite streamer Ninja, the stream generated 635,000 viewers on Twitch and went viral. And speaking of Ninja, he once revealed to earn around $500,000 monthly from his subscribers alone. But going back to the money in the game itself, being free to play doesn't mean that players are not spending anything. On the contrary, instead of spending $40 for the game, players buy online V-Bucks, a virtual currency that they can exchange for in-game skins, celebratory dances, or even special missions that can cost as much as $20 each. And let's not forget about the Battle Pass and its premium tiers, which grant us even more delicious goodies. What's more though, is a lot of accessories in the Fortnite shop are available on a limited basis, tempting players to buy them before the items disappear from the virtual shelves, which gets even more interesting when you throw in skins of your favorite, widely known movie and game characters. No wonder why since 2018, the average player spending in the game has increased by 21%. Now take into account that in May of 2020, Fortnite reported 350 million registered players worldwide. To put that into perspective, if Fortnite was a country, it would now be the third largest on Earth by population alone, surpassed only by India and China. Now let that sink in. And Fortnite also has a big presence on the global esports scene, and big also in the terms of money involved. The 2019 World Cup alone boasted a whopping $30 million prize pool, which made it second only to Dota 2's TI9. In 2020, the game's competitive scene had a $17 million prize pool, and 2021 can be proud of $20 million available. With millions of players, a vibrant community, and even big concerts being played inside of the game, Fortnite is surely not going anywhere, and it's safe to assume that its numbers, also those tied to cash, will just keep on growing. So what are you waiting for? Start training. Say all you want about how the llamas look funny and the colors look childish. There is serious money in this game. And after sustaining its popularity for the past four years, they are clearly doing something right. So what does it take to turn pro in Fortnite? Let's meet one of the game's new stars, an 18-year-old kid from Denmark who's already made his mark in the game. Meet Anas El Abd, or better known as Anas. Let's check out how he handled our quiz. When was Fortnite first released? A. 2017 B. 2015 C. 2016 I think it's A. It haven't been along for that long. 2017. In which season of the first chapter did Epic Games introduce pets and music? Season 
A season 5, B season X, C season 8. I think it's B season X because yeah, again the pits it's just a new thing to the game, I think. Mm. Oh, really? Didn't you know that? <laughs> on what engine does Fortnite run on? A source, B Unreal Engine, 4 C Frostbite. Yeah, I have I think it's Unreal Engine because it's like on the launcher every time I open the game. Isn't it? Perfect. How many weapon tiers are there in Fortnite? A3, B4, C5. So that's green, blue, grey, purple and legendary, so must be C5. How many default skins are available to the players? Oh, A10, B12, C8. I'm not sure. I think it's like from, there's default skins from. I think it's A10. A or C? It's A. I'm gonna go with A. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unlucky. How many skins are current? Currently available in Fortnite in total. A around 500, B over 800, C 400. Mm. Oh, really? Damn, that's a lot. What? That's crazy. <laughs> in Chapter 2, Season 3, what animal could you use to travel around the map? A a shark, B. Oh, oh A a shark. B a pigeon, C a dog. Uh, since there was a lot of sharks in Dirty Ducks, I know it's sharks. <laughs> Which one of these is not a basic building material? A wood, B concrete, C metal. Uh, B concrete. Because that's brick. I appreciate if you held your fingers crossed so and supported us in Gamers Without Borders tournament. That's it from Anas, and with the growing popularity of the game, it's not only pro players who are queuing up to get into it, but also celebrities. Check this out. For some people, playing video games is something we keep to ourselves and our close friends, while others can't help but brag about their kill counts and skills. Fortnite is different, however. Everyone wants a piece of it. When you have famous athletes and artists playing Fortnite, you know it's a darn good game. Also because of them, the game was catapulted to new heights. Drake. At the top of the heap is, of course, Drake. When it comes to Fortnite, Drake is considered to be a bit of an icon. People say that the Canadian rapper gave Fortnite definitive cool status. In March 2018, Drake, as one of three celebrities, was invited to play with Fortnite's golden boy himself, Ninja. Ninja and Drake's collaborative stream was even watched by more than 600,000 concurrent viewers. Hey, yo, I've been watching your, 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 I've been watching your shit for a minute, man. It's crazy. Man. Travis Scott. Travis Scott is one of those artists who clearly knows how not only to fill concert arenas, but also how to bring attention to the Battle Royale game. By inviting players and fans to an online concert entirely held in Fortnite, he managed to gain 12.3 million live viewers. In 2021, the YouTube video from that event has garnered a staggering 155 million views already. Finn Wolfhard. Die-hard fans of the popular Netflix series Stranger Things surely know who Finn Wolfhard is. The actor who plays the character of Mike Wheeler on the show is probably the youngest celebrity to play the game. The Canadian actor joined his brother Nick on Twitch where they play and stream Fortnite regularly. Della Alley. It's hard not to admit that Della Alley's colorful personality shows both on and off the pitch. It's not only because he plays the game and streams it, which actually helped him to gain over 130,000 followers on Twitch. Dalla actually went viral a couple of times because of his ridiculous Fortnite-themed goal celebrations. Slatan Ibrahimovic. 
Another football player on our list is the Lion himself. No other than Slatan Ibrahimovic. Everybody knows Slatan's skills on the pitch, but did you know that the Swede is actually a pretty big fan of video games? Whenever he has a chance to grab a controller, he will do it. We've already seen it a few times already with Slatan playing some games with his brother on Twitch. And what would be the game of his choice mostly? Fortnite, of course. Demetrius Johnson. The first UFC flyweight champion with multiple records, including the most consecutive title defenses, the most takedowns, and over 10 takedowns in three different fights, is Demetrius Johnson. In between punches and KOs, Demetrius loves to kick some butt in the virtual world too. In 2018, he even attended one of the Fortnite tournaments for celebrities, and since then, Johnson has continued developing his Fortnite skills. Like many of these celebrities, Fortnite is a name known all over the globe. What's even better about it is the fact that it creates a bond between people of all kinds of different cultures, religions, and economic status. Fortnite welcomes all, and that includes some of your favorite celebrities. While it would be epic to meet some of those celebs on the battle bus, don't tell your friends, because the traffic might crash the server when you see Drake playing Ninja. Speaking of celebs, in Gaming Night, you get to know players from different arenas. And here, you have a chance to meet the stars from another perspective. Let's welcome a legend of Counter-Strike, Olof Meister. And let's find out how he handled our tricky quiz. It's very hard to see anything from this. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is super hard. First thing that came to mind for me, I think it's uh, maybe my graffiti on Overpass from back in 2014 Major when I, I did the defuse on Overpass. That's what I'm guessing. Gambit has sent even more firepower there to bring more HP This is so smart. Oh, this is huge. Doji's throwing a nade into the corner just as the bomb's going to go off. They're both going to go down. Oh, it's there? Oh, it's that one? Oh, I didn't know. But this is really nice. But I like the Dusia play. Okay, I think this is the simple one from... But I'm not sure actually now. It's either the simple one. I'm gonna guess on simple on cash, the one with two against my team Fnatic back in the days. Oh, and uh, two no scope jumping down from heaven. Uh, if it's this one, I, it hurts my soul, man. This was a very tough round. For sure, this was a hard round to lose, man. It's insane. Be the recipient. It is gonna be Hiko. That's a big frag, but simple is creeping. They seem with the orb now, and the, the desperate play into B comes in. Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. He's gonna fall down again. Oh, what is this touch from Simple? Are you serious? What is that? You can't do that, Simple. It's just Simple that wins rounds like this. Uh, I mean, I don't know how he does it, but for, for some reason, his uh, no scopes it's from every range. It doesn't matter if it's one meter or 2,000 meters away. If he wants to hit it, he hits it. <laughs> okay, now I know. This is my graffiti from Overpass. This one uh, was in the major 2014. The fuse against Dignitas. Nice. Around the world we go, but the defuse, the defuse is coming in. Has it, he's still going. Oh, Olaf just about gets it as the flames come in. And look at the little dance of happiness. It was actually a little bit of a stupid play, if I'm going to be honest, but uh, it was fun. I made, I made a little dance after it and I was super excited. It was my first major and I'm so proud to have a graffiti in the game. It's uh, it's so cool to have one. I think also it's the best graffiti in the game. I think I like uh, how it looked. Oh, it, it, this is just somewhere on the map. Okay, this is super hard. It's a painting and you can shoot it somewhere, I guess, Mirage. But I have no idea where, man. You cannot ask me these questions. I'm too old for this. I don't know. <laughs> Dust 2, maybe. Oh, okay. I have never noticed that there is a bucket on train there, man. I have. I had no idea, to be honest. I wasn't even close. Oh, where is this? Like, can, can it be cobblestone? I'm gonna guess cobblestone because when I see this, I think about the Dragonlord skin and I think it's from Cobblestone. So I'm guessing Cobblestone. Ah, I'm proud of it. Now our guest today is a variety streamer and has a dedicated fan base that love to simply hang out with him. NMP LOL, welcome to Gaming Night. First of all, how are you doing? 
I'm doing, I'm doing great, doing great. How are you? I'm good inside my, you know, futuristic studio, having a great old time over here. Now, uh, what, type of what type of content creator do you classify yourself as? Man, that's, a, that's kind of a tough question, you know? Um, kind of just like variety streamer. And honestly, I'm more like, I try to be funny. I'm not very funny, but I try to be funny. <laughs> So like a fake funny guy, I guess, if that's a thing, you know. We'll, we'll put that under one of, you know, the Twitch streaming like titles that you can select when you go down. Trying to yeah. be funny. That's cool. I mean, that's fine. So uh, I want to take it all the way back now, Nick. Okay. I want to take it all the way back sure. to your first few streams on Twitch. Okay. How were they different to how you do things now? Oh, they were, they were massively different. Um, my first few streams on Twitch, uh, it was maybe eight years ago when I was back in college and I would actually stream from my college library. I would bring in like an external hard drive and I would put like OBS and World of Warcraft on the external hard drive. I'd plug it in and I'd stream from the library. Were you having to keep super quiet the whole time then? Could you not react to yes. anything that was crazy that was going on? Did you get told off all the time? Uh, I, I was whispering. It was it was not at all what it is today. You know, everyone nowadays is like, yeah, you know, no, it was it was very, very quiet because I, I didn't have like proper Internet at my house. So I had to go to uh, like uh, my college library to do it. Man, I mean, you currently live at Soda Poppins house, right? So a fellow streamer. Yes. How did that come about? Yes. Um, well, um, I've known him for longer than Twitch has been around. Uh, we were World of Warcraft Arena partners, uh, you know, when I was in college as well. And um, I actually got kicked out of my house and uh, got my own place. And then he got kicked out of his house. And then we didn't even meet each other in person. And he flew to live with me in Michigan, uh, like 10 years ago or something. Wow. So I mean, you, yeah. you lived together before you'd even met like for day one. What was day one like? <laughs> Day one, it, it was, it was like we've known each other, you know, the entire time. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was no problem, easy transition, you know, and it's been, you know, kind of smooth sailing ever since. That's one of the best things about the gaming industry, isn't it? You can literally get to know someone down to a T and never have even seen their yep. face before. Uh, but you've, exactly. uh, you've amassed a huge following across Twitch and YouTube. So for them, you're kind of, you're someone to look up to. Did you have anyone that you looked up to in the YouTube and gaming world as your channels grew? Um, yeah, I mean, I always kind of looked up, you know, to, to Chance because Chance, you know, has always been, you know, bigger, bigger than me, bigger. He's been one of the biggest streamers on Twitch and his work ethic, you know, and nowadays, you know, there's, there's other streamers out there. Like I like streamers who are constantly like, you know, pushing the boundaries and, you know, creating and like innovating, you know, you know, people like Ludwig, Ludwig, for example, like, you know, he has shows and things like that. So yeah, I think streamers that, that are like, yeah. I mean, I would say you, what you just mentioned, actually, work ethic is like the number one thing, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you have people that inspire you because of how hard they work. Now, I mean, oh, touching, yeah. touching on Gamers Without Borders right now, I mean, this charity, this year, sorry, the charity organizations, they're using the donations from Gamers Without Borders towards COVID vaccination rollouts. Has COVID affected you at all over this past year? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, the vaccine is is one of the most important things that's happened recently because like me and you know my roommates we were locked down like for like a year like as soon as actually even before the lockdowns came in place we were locked down because uh, uh my my girlfriend Milena got wind of like what was going on in Norway and she locked us down before everyone else got locked down and oh, wow. um you know we've been locked down ever since uh we're talking about you order groceries you wipe them off with you know disinfectant you know super serious stuff and now the vaccine you know now I'm able to you know you know do get back to you know, almost normal, you know, the best we can, sure. you know, go back to the gym. You know, I, I didn't go to the gym for, you know, the, the entire time. I tried working out at home. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's you know, really not, is it? There's only so many uh, burpees you can do. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, the the vaccine was, was, was you know, I was just like, you know, sigh relief finally. Yes. You know, so. No, I agree, man. I agree. So I'm going to, I'm going to take things away from uh, that discussion. Now I'm actually going to just throw a few curveballs your way. Like I've already told you off stream, yeah. your YouTube videos that you make like on a regular basis, what's your unwritten sure. rules for creating a YouTube video? Do you have like a kind of set thing that you stick to? Um, Not really because uh, my YouTube videos are mostly just like stream highlights. Um, now, the the more like in-depth like personal videos um you know we just try and 
you know, make it like this might sound kind of cliche, like kind of like just as real as possible. Like, sure. you know, we just we, we don't go like super over the top, like, you know, crazy prank or whatever. Yeah. You know, we'll do things like, you know, uh, you know, going to get a car wash, but try and make that as interesting and as you know, funny as you can. You know, like simple, basic things yeah. that we try to make, you know, interesting or at least, you know, entertaining as we can. Even though your content is, you know, like simple, like you just said, you still do quite yeah. quick cutaways to different things. So it keeps it interesting and yeah. it keeps the flow like nice and fast paced. So I love them, as yeah. you can probably already tell. I've watched everything. Um, oh, which, uh, OK, oh, I have a funny question that someone sent in that I wanted to ask you because sure. it's something that I would like to find out as well. Which kids movie terrified you? Mine was E.T. <laughs> oh it's kids movie mm. it's that kids movie that everyone's like how could you be scared of that and you was like i don't know when i was young it terrified me i'm not really a fan of like um like like it's not even really a movie it's like a play like cats yeah i don't know if yeah, that like <laughs> if the cats like when they're like uh it's kind of scary like you know when they're like you know human cats and it's yeah all that sort of stuff I wasn't really a fan of that um and anything i'm not i'm not a fan of like oversized things so if it's like if you're watching the movie ants it's like a big <laughs> yeah. ant a bug's like, life so and yeah well, that's a toy story <laughs> yeah like when, when things get, when things get oversized like it kind of scares me okay like, i don't know watch out for twitch yeah. chat because they're gonna be loving that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and do you have any weird food combinations that you enjoy so something like for me i'm british as you've probably already been yeah. able to tell i can put gravy on everything and enjoy it what about you well i'm a ketchup guy Ooh. uh i have ketchup at, at my desk at home there's ketchup bottles next to me and people are like <laughs> you know you have to refrigerate it i'm like no i go through it so quickly there's no point <laughs> so i just put ketchup on everything you know that i possibly can you know ketchup and, and great uh, ketchup and ketchup. gravy yeah i mean i couldn't trade out gravy for ketchup but you know what you can have your ketchup yeah. i'll have my gravy thank you so much for helping me out with the <laughs> deep dive nmp lol right nick we've got another segment for you to take part in okay this is called the how flexible are you challenge how flexible are you nick um like a uh, very, very brittle piece of wood. So. <laughs> so I'm guessing this is going to be good because not only do you have to be quite flexible, you've also got to have some good hand-eye coordination. Now, what we're talking about here is I'm not going to get you up and try and do the splits or anything like that. But what I am going to try and get you to do is try and just coordinate a little bit with your hands. Now, you've been a gamer for how long? Since you can remember? Yeah, yes. Okay, it's so. Like a walk. You know, fingers of fury, I would say. Most gamers, you know, we can do lots of cool things with our hands. Some people play claw on a controller. Other people use mouse mm -hmm. and keyboard, which is as well pretty damn tough. So I'm going to get you to try out some of these things. First of all, we're going to start. Well, let's limber up first. Let's shake off the hands. Let's try an elbow lick. <laughs> Could you lick your elbow, Nick? Uh, I can't in can this I lick suit. my elbow? You want to try and lick your elbow? Uh, uh -huh. No. Th this, so here's my elbow. Yeah. Here's... This is it. This, this is, is the, the distance. <laughs> it, it, it is not even remotely close. To There's my mouth. no chance. Absolutely no chance. No, okay. No. Okay, that's fine. No. We started off with quite a tough one. Okay, try raise one eyebrow yeah. like Dwayne Johnson. Come on. You know what? I'll give you that. I'm looking at you. Looking at you in my screen over here. I will give you that. Okay, you can go one one for two. Fifty percent yeah. so far. You're you're gonna do better at this rate than. Uh, than your previous quiz that we did. You were really good at that. Okay, taco tongue. Fold your tongue, roll it. And the funny thing is, I actually tried to do this recently. My <laughs> girlfriend asked me to do that. Like, just, just like, hey, she's like, hey, look what I can do. Can you do this? No. <laughs> You can't roll it in the middle. See, I think only 30% of people in the world can do that. And I think that it yeah. always seems like more people can do it. Can you move your ears without moving anything else? I can't. No, no, no. Without see, moving anything else, no. The eyebrows have to move, and I think moving your ears is something like two percent yeah. of people in the world can do that. Okay. Melania can do that too. She can do what? that too. Melania, yeah. she'll be our next guest on definitely. Yeah. So, uh, okay, turn your thumb upside down. So the way that we do this, okay, if I have my hand here, you got to get your thumb behind your hand, but it has to be like a ninety degree. Like, I can't do it. You got to get it almost lining up with your knuckle. So bend your thumb behind your hand. Is this going to be a no as well? Ooh. No. <laughs> like, we like have it go down. You know, yeah, you know those like crazy double jointed kids that you're at school with. Like yeah. they always can do those weird things with their hands. Yeah, I can't do it either, man. Don't worry, no. we're in the same boat. It's fine. And, uh, yeah, no. 
Okay, Star Trek fingers, split them. Actually, we can. Yes, can you do the other way in the middle? Put the two in the middle and one either side like that. Oh, uh... Mm. Mm. So it's like you can flip them, pow, pow. No, I can't, I can't, but I can do this though. That's yes, it. you can. Okay, I'll give you half a point. That is absolutely half cool. Half a point. I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take half it. point. Okay, finally, okay. We have the thumb yeah. challenge. Now, what you've got to do, okay, you have one thumb up like this and the other mm -hmm. hand pointing at your knuckles, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to switch index finger to thumb. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the thumb challenge. Yeah, and you've got to do it five times quickly. It's an this is, absolute this is head hard. melter. This is hard, isn't it? This is hard. So we found these on. Oh down. no! Oh no! Wait. That, do, you, do you have to practice this? Go. Is this something people practice, or do I you think, just? You know, it's you good for hand-eye coordination as well. This is going to help with your Apex Legends skills, man. You're going to be getting loads of "You Are the Apex Champions" after doing this. Pow, pow. Let me see both hands. Let's sure. go. Yeah, ready? Thumb and finger. Switch. It's so weird because it looks so easy and then you try and do it and it's... <laughs> it's not. It's it's, an absolute why can't I do this? I should be able to do this. I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Well, I think you'll be, you'll be better at spotting lies, which is one of our other yeah. segments. So don't worry yeah. about that. That is totally cool. NMPL, thanks yeah. so much for joining me in this segment. We had a lot of fun. You know, we tried to find out how, you know, flexible slash, you know, how the brain works behind the gaming side of things. Yes. But you know what? On to the next one. So NMP LOL, we've got a second quiz for you. And this one is called Spot the Lie. So essentially what you've got to do is look at three different statements. And one of those statements is a lie. Do you want to start with number one, please? Sure, sure, sure. Do you want me to read them out? Let's do it. Yeah, you read them out. Okay, so we got three different ones here. And the first one is the world's fastest punch is thrown by the mantis shrimp. That's option A. Uh, Bloodhound was originally designed for Titanfall, which I assume that's the character from Apex Legends. Indeed. Uh, and Wombat's saliva contains poison. So we're looking for the lie. We are. So what's your thoughts initially? Mantis Ooh. shrimp? Well, have you ever seen it throw a punch? I have never seen a mantis shrimp before, <laughs> so I don't know if they even have hands. Um, <laughs> I'll give you so... a hint. It doesn't have hands. <laughs> well, if it doesn't have hands... Well, it uses, like, it uses like its knuckle kind of thing i don't know oh, okay. i'm doing this i'm okay. doing this and this is kind of you know yeah so like now now b bloodhound was originally designed for titanfall that is just like that sounds like that could be a thing uh but i'm not even sure who who makes who makes titanfall i, I if i knew that then i could you know decipher and then <laughs> wombats you know oh i see i see i see uh wombat saliva contains poison man the lie <laughs> the answers are so weird when I'm going to tell you. So, I mean, this is just, this could be just a random guess yeah. for you. Rand Honestly, I'm just, I'm just going to go with, I'm just going to go with, with, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just go with, let's go with, with uh, Wombat Saliva. Sure. Let's go see. You are totally and utterly correct right now. Wombat saliva, saliva does not contain poison. The only thing that wombats Ooh. have as a defense mechanism is they have a bone that covers its butt. So when it's digging holes, predators, yeah. if they decide to bite it, they'll bite straight into a bone. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's, and a mantis that's shrimp, a that's a fact about the shrimp, you know. A 50 miles an hour faster than a 22 caliber bullet it punches. Wow. There you go. Wouldn't that want to get by that? Facts, facts, facts. Cool. Number two. Sure, sure. Um, so uh, the first one, uh, choice A, is RPG games are 30 years old. The first RPG video game was published in 1991. Well, that is 30 years, technically. <laughs> uh, Lifeline comes from wealth, uh, another Apex question. And giant pandas eat approximately five tons of bamboo per year. So I know I know that giant pandas eat a lot. I know that. Okay. Um lifeline comes from wealth i have no clue i mean do you not see the comics plays... and everything as well surrounding apex because there's so much content now around it all the videos they release yeah. and the comics and like additional I stuff i haven't i have played a lot of apex um i have and i know lifeline she has like these drums and stuff like mm -hmm. that and drums could be kind of expensive so they can be um 
And the first, and honestly, I think A is A is the lie because I think it's older than 30 years. Dude, you're good at this. Nice. The first RPG game was in 1982 called Dragon Stomper, yeah. and it was on the Atari. Boom. That sounds about right. Lifeline comes that from wealth, right. and giant pandas eat five tons of bamboo a year. That's insane. Yeah, that right. sounded right to me. Let's go to the next one, buddy. Yeah. Okay. So next one, uh, the first, first uh, uh, possible wrong or possible <laughs> lie. You can't get married with a video game character. Uh, okay. You can't smell anything when you are asleep. Human brain uses ten watts of energy and does not feel pain. So we're looking for the lie. Man, yeah. interesting, interesting, interesting. So uh, I think somewhere in the world, you can probably get married to a video game character. <laughs> I was so wanting to see I'm what your say, opinion on that would be. Which which video game character would you marry? Come on, if you had the choice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I I like Reyna okay. from Valorant. Okay. Mine would be Princess so, Peach. <laughs> That's yep, yep. That's probably a lot safer bet than Reyna. Reyna likes to, you know, you know, suck the souls out of people in, in game. But uh, okay, so Which let's one see. Which one thinks the lie? To think human brain uses ten watts energy and does not feel pain. That, that sounds true. Um, you can't smell anything when you are asleep. <laughs> I like that you're really, like, really searching through the chasms of your brain to try and figure this out. This is good. You're I, really I, actually I, trying I, to beat this. This is good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think. Well, the thing is, you when you're asleep, I assume you do, you do smell stuff. You just don't realize you're doing it. You know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. If, maybe it's a trick question. I don't know. I'm gonna go with A. I don't. I think. I think you can get married to a video game character. The the lengthy thought process over this is actually helping you out because you're right. Yet again, you actually can okay. get married to a video game character because in 2009, uh, in a live stream, a 27 year old Japanese man married Nene Anagasaki, which is a Nintendo DS character. Do, wow. you, think they, do you think they've got kids? Uh, yeah, probably. You can just, you know <laughs> code them in. So I think so. Okay, next one. Let's go. Okay, so uh, first one. Uh, balls made of glass can bounce higher than rubber ones. Um, second second uh, choice. Uh, two square miles is the area of the smallest country in the world. And Arnold Schwar Schwarzenegger refused a role in Quake movie. Man, I have no idea because I've never seen Quake movie. Mm. Um, I have no idea. That could be uh, helping you right made what you yeah, just said could help you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Balls made of glass can bounce higher than rubber ones, which is true. Um, I think. It sounds like it's some sort of tricky physics that would be true. <laughs> uh, two, two square miles is the air of the smallest country in the world. That sounds about right. I'm going to go with C. Yes, you see, uh, you are like, you're five for five right now, I think, or four for four. Arnold wow. Schwarzenegger never yeah. refused to play in the Quake movie because there hasn't been a Quake movie. There you go. <laughs> so, okay, there you go. go. Number there six, go. let's go. Uh, okay, uh, Apex Legends has nine different playable characters. Well, I literally play this game all the time, I couldn't tell you where they are, but... Um, I do as well, I had to figure it out for myself as well. Yeah, uh, the color of hippopotamus milk is pink. Okay, the first food eaten in space by astronauts was applesauce. Man, I have. No the doozies, aren't they? They're milk. tough. <laughs> yeah, the, the first food eaten in space ever was applesauce. That sounds about right, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, the um, nine playable characters. I think it has more. I do. I'm not sure, though. I could probably count them all and see. I, I can't I can't think right now. <laughs> I was um, gonna say do it out loud, and then I thought, oh, is but, he gonna bail out of this? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll kickstart you. Go, Bangalore, yeah. Bloodhound, Bangalore. Bloodhound, Keep Wraith, going. yeah. Um, the guy with the gas, Gibraltar, Postic. Gibraltar, uh, yeah. Octane, yeah. Um, a Mirage, yep. Um, rep, rep, the rep. girl that can fly, Revenant, Revenant. Oh yeah. Well then, yeah. There's way more than there's way more than nine. 
So it's A. Well, then there you go. See, you figured it out. Process of elimination. <laughs> I like it. Yes, Apex has more than yeah. nine playable characters. Uh, yeah. Hippopotamus milk is pink, and applesauce yeah. was eaten by astronauts. Let's go. Next yeah. question. Okay. Uh, You're first the first one. person to be uh, undefeated, you... by the way, so far. Just letting you know. Big shoes wow, to fill. Lucky me. Let's go. Lucky me. Now we're gonna we're gonna throw this one. Uh, a human's fingernails grows faster when someone is cold. Okay. Two of Apex Legends characters' costumes were designed by Carl Lag Lagerfield. Before 1913, you could send your child to grandma's via postal service. Uh, C is absolutely true because I heard that before. <laughs> um, so fingernails growing faster wrong. in the cold, or did Carl Carl Lagerfeld design Apex Legends characters' costumes? I don't know who that is. He is the I designer for Chanel. Oh, okay. Boom. Um, <laughs> I mean, hmm, interesting. Humans' fingernails grow faster when someone is cold. So my girlfriend's nails do grow really fast, and I do keep it cold in the house. Shout so out to Melina. I have no, yeah, <laughs> I honestly have no clue with this one. Um, we got to jump on one. Let's go. I'll, I'll start counting you down. Let's just go with. We'll just go with C, honestly. Even though I think it's true, it's probably C. I'm no, that say. is indeed a fact. Two of Apex Legends yeah. characters' costumes have not been made by Karl Lagerfeld. Really, that okay. would be insane. Yes. Next question. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Johnny Depp holds all the rights for any computer game combined with, with Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, yes. Pirates He's not of the from Caribbean. the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the first eight hours, Apex Legends surpassed one million unique players. A, tu a tsunami can. It'd be as fast as a jet plane. Uh, the fact that some of these are facts is plane? crazy. I know. <laughs> See, the thing about Johnny Depp is I know that he's been, you know, like uh, down, like, you know, kind of, you know, down recently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with all of his, you know, things going on with him. So I just, I just doubt that he really, you know, has all the rights for, you know, all the computer games. Um, and as, as fast as a jet plane, that doesn't seem that doesn't seem possible either. So, um, to be honest, like like a tsunami as fast as a jet plane, and jet planes go like. I'm, I'm gonna go with A. You're gonna go, I'm with, gonna go a. with A. The A yeah, is the lie, man. I got you've only got one yeah. wrong. That is absolutely yeah. unbelievable, dude. Nick, yeah. you're an absolute boss yeah. spotting lies, man. I wouldn't want to try and cheat you ever. That yeah. is outrageous. You did better than I expected. So thank you so much for joining me on Gaming Night, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. As you all know, Gamers Without Borders is about charity. And I had a chance to sit down and talk to Heather Bennett, the Vice President of Partnerships and Philanthropy in Direct Relief Charity Organization. I'm joined by the Vice President of Partnerships and Philanthropy at Direct Relief, Heather Bennett. Welcome to Gamers Without Borders. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me during your extremely busy schedule. How are you, firstly? You know, it's it's been a rough year. It's been a really uh, challenging 15 months, but, you know, we've, we've seen good things come out of it, too. So thank you so much for having me. Well, coming out of direct relief, we have some astounding figures from the past year. I mean, regarding to your response to COVID-19 in particular, I mean, you've provided 2,400 tons of PPE and medical resources, 69 million masks and $1.3 billion dollars in medical aid so i'm just going to big you up for a bit there because that's <laughs> unbelievable uh, so to be able to source the funds and the equipment how did you adapt your fundraising in a time of a pandemic yeah that's a great question and really the model of direct relief is to build on in-kind goods and services so we get a lot of donations in the form of medicines PPE, um, in addition to cash resources. So whenever we do get cash donations, we're really able to leverage those um, against, you know, for example, free medications from a lot of the pharmaceutical companies around the world, transportation from FedEx. So a lot of these services are provided for free. So when we do get donations of financial resources, we're able to stretch those even farther. Um, we were really fortunate over the last year and a half to, to receive a lot of really generous contributions from people all over the world. And, you know, that's just made such a difference, not only to, to enable our work, to be able to do more of what we're doing, but really to inspire, you know, the staff and all of the hospitals and healthcare workers that we support, just to see the outpouring of generosity from people has just been, you know, just so outstanding to witness. 
Yeah, I'm sure it must feel so rewarding when, you know, that kind of comes in and then it kind of solidifies what you're doing for everyone and it's such a positive, like, environment you're creating at Direct Relief as well. But uh, I have to say, at Gamers Without Borders, uh, our players compete, you know, they win prize money and they can choose to give their winnings to charity organisations of their choice. And Direct Relief received $1.9 million in 2020 so what was the response like at the office like you've just mentioned you know creates a positive vibe what was it like a cheers cheers and whistles <laughs> um it was so just it was such an exciting opportunity for direct relief we've been a little bit in in the gaming space for a little while as a charity but this was bigger than anything we could have ever imagined to be a part of and and really i mean this was a, a hugely international and global effort of gamers to come together from all over the world from all these different partners and, and really just to, to see everyone coming together, uh, it, it was just so inspiring. And I mean, it, it, for the staff at Direct Relief to see so many people rooting for us and rooting for the healthcare workers to be protected. I mean, I, I don't even know a, a good word to use to describe just how excited we all were to be a part of such an incredible event. Yeah, I think that it's a win-win. I mean, gamers get to come together and do what they love to do. And then you receiving donations to then go to a great cause. I mean, it, like I said, it is a win-win for sure. Um, but I want to take things into 2021 now. Okay, so talking 2021, what are the goals that you're striving towards right now at Direct Relief? Yeah, I mean, we're still we're still in the thick of, of COVID, unfortunately. You know, it ebbs and flows in different in different countries. We're seeing spikes in India and in Brazil and Mexico. Here in the United States, where Direct Relief is based, we're, we're feeling a little sense of normalcy, but, you know, cautiously, very, very cautiously. So I think as we're looking into this next year, we want to continue to do what Direct Relief has always done for over 70 years, is to provide medicine and supplies to hospitals around the world in over 100 countries. So we're still going to continue to do that. Um, but I, I think there'll still be a, a layer of COVID on top of everything else. Um, so really, our goals are really just to strengthen healthcare systems and healthcare providers' ability to provide care to people around the world, whether it's COVID, whether it's chronic conditions like diabetes or hypertension, um, or in acute crisis like after disaster situations. So we're, we're always keenly watching what's happening in the world so we can respond quickly and appropriately and mobilize what's most needed. So. As we're looking forward, we just want to do more of what we do and, you know, invite the participation of anyone and everyone to be a part of it. And, and I think that's why we look forward to this event. But, go, you know, granted, it's only the second year, but we've been looking forward to this yeah. year since 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so to be able to, to be a part of this and, you know, be invited back to be a part of Gamers Without Borders is just, you know, it gives us a lift to be able to look forward to optimism and what, what's going to happen in 2021. Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this interview and taking the time. Uh, we at Gamers Without Borders are extremely proud to have Direct Relief uh, alongside us. And best of luck with the remainder of 2021 at Direct Relief. Thank you so much. That's it for today's episode of Gaming Night. Stay tuned because we'll be back next week. And remember, no one left behind. <laughs>